On the breakfast, should political debates be mandatory for presidential and governorship candidates in Nigeria? This is the demand of the Conference of Nigerian Political Parties. But how visible is this? We'll find out ahead of the breakfast. Also on the breakfast, Nigerians inflation rate rose from 20.77% in September 2022 to 21.09% in October 2022. This is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. An analyst will join us later to help us understand and make sense of the numbers. We'll also be looking through the papers this morning, having an in-depth analysis of uh, the major headlines. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Beautiful Thursday morning right here. I am Messi Bokwo. As always, we start the conversation with uh, Top Trending. Uh, this would mean that what are the conversations that uh, people are talking about, Nigerians are engaging, what's really happening and what are people really interested in. Now, first is the fact that the people's, uh, the ruling party, Nigeria's ruling party, we're talking about the APC, uh, started her campaign in just a plateau state. Well, something that happened quite unfortunate is that uh, does the video, which we're going to roll in no time, uh, angry Nigerians stoning or stoned the APC presidential team during that rally in Joss. And uh, the deputy speaker had to beg for, you know, such act to be stopped, throwing of the stones. It's, it's, it's something that uh, has never really been seen. But we just quickly look at this. And when we come back, we'll discuss some more. Well, that's actually what uh, transpired right there. Uh, the videos has been making that round and uh, it's gotten a lot of Nigerians talking. But quickly to everything, uh, we know that Nigerians are very comical, even in serious situation. Now, a lot of persons have made reference to, uh, you know, the fact that at some point, it was during the political campaign uh, about 2019 or thereabout, uh, the spinner requested whether you know, if the APC does not perform, stone us. So, um, Nigerians, some people have said, well, this really is a response to the call to stone us if we do not perform, you know, after two years, if the Buhari's administration does not perform whenever he sees us, you know, throw stone. And some people are saying this has actually been taken into cognizance and that's the reason for that action. But however, it's totally condemnable. Uh, if you are angry as a Nigerian and displeased with the current dispensational administration, then it would be important to, you know, um, show your grievance during the polls. When it's time to cast your vote, that's when you should, you know, show how angry you are. But violence has never solved a problem. I mean, two wrongs never make a right. That's it. And it has never happened. So taking the laws into your hand does not solve the problem. If you're angry, displeased with everything that's going on, then you have the elections is coming 2023. It will be a time for you to express how um, dissatisfied you are with any, you know, with the government or, you know, the political party. And that would actually matter. Expressing your votes but violence is not acceptable and, and should not be tolerated. But hopefully we're, we, we also expect that... Um, it should be an investigation. I mean, we're talking about uh, the police carrying out an investigation and also ensuring that those who were responsible for causing that disorder uh, should be brought to book. Unfortunate. Moving away, uh, quite interesting is the fact that uh, the move to establish national carrier, that's the Nigerian air, probably might have to suffer a setback uh, due to uh, a federal high court's who actually granted an interim order uh, asking 
the stoppage of the process of establishing the Nigerian air, we should actually have a collaboration with the Ethiopian airline uh, in, in terms of, you know, the suits. Well, the suit was actually filed by registered trustees of the airline operators in Nigeria, as Man Air Services Limited, Air Peace Limited, and Max Air Limited, United Nigerian Company Limited, and Top Brass Aviation Limited, the plaintiffs, these are the persons that formulated uh, the five questions to the court to determine, you know, a lot of issues. So these persons have actually, you know, approached the court, they came together and say, hey, this entire union cannot happen, okay? But prior to this time, we understood that the Nigerian uh, air had planned uh, some sharing or selling of her asset, you know, to the Ethiopian airline, which we know that is very, uh, it's, it's been rated as one of the biggest and very renowned airline in Africa and also can be complete, competing uh, at the global standard. But there's still several prayers that, you know, this, this, uh, the court actually granted or the question was being put out by uh, this category of persons or group, if you like to say. Now, one of the press is that whether the entire process of the sale and transfer of shares of the first defendant to the second defendant and is constituted by the third and the fourth defendant is in line with the provision of infrastructure and concession regulatory commission of uh, the 2005 Act. Federal Completion and Consumer Protection Act, International Civil Aviation Organization Convention, the National Policy on Public-Private Partnership, that's the N4P, uh, looking at Section 76 and 81 of the Federal Completion and Consumer Protection Act. They say it does not affect the entire process, including the selection, approval, and also grant the second defendant and its constituent by the third and fourth defendant. Uh, they are not valid and thereby entailing the entire process to a fresh bidding exercise. Um, this has been questions has been put out. Another one is that they've also asked the court to award them a two billion naira in damages and order a perpetual injunction restraining the federal government from transferring the shares and operation of Nigerian Air to Ethiopian Airlines, which will have a larger, you know, uh, shareholding, right? So on the ruling on the case, which has the Nigerian Air and Ethiopian Airlines, Hadi Sirika, Minister of Aviation, Abubakar Malami, Attorney General of the Federation, and are the first to the fourth defendant. And the Federal High Court judge said that the government which was represented by the aviation minister and the attorney general should not proceed to the establishment and agreement until a substantive matter of the suitor's head and determine. And so that's why you have the request of private airlines operators who don't want the monopoly uh, broken. This is the question that a lot of people are asking. And some people are saying, in whose interest is all of this? Uh, people are saying, Government, we haven't known government to be a manager of anything. I mean, in terms of uh, business, you say government is not really a manager of business. They have no business being in business. And so let's allow the private sector to come in and all this going on. But the question is, in whose interest is all of this uh, being put out exactly? Could it be, who, who are the people querying all of this? Could it be that there might just also be some concern as regards uh, breaking off the monopoly that you have, uh, this person's having? It's a lot. But let's see how all of this unfolds as we inch closer to 2023. Another on the top trending is that the EFCC has arrested a uh, currency speculator. Uh, and... If you look at it, this has been also a reflection in the interest or the rate at which, you know, the dollar and the Naira exchange has been. And that's why um, uh, some Nigerians have actually spoken differently. There's been several policies from the CBN. But Nigeria's Anti-Corruption Agency, that's the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says it has arrested a certain Mustafa Naira who is responsible for sabotaging uh, the Nigerian economy. And, and, and quickly with all of that, is that we also have the issue of um, having parallel markets. Who created the parallel market? How do we get to a point where you have individuals uh, getting to uh, that stage where they can sabotage the economy? So, yes, the um, 
agency has reported the arrest as part of its ongoing operation to sensitize the foreign exchange sector and read it of speculators and all shades of economic sabotage. Some people have said this is actually commendable. But when we say we have a system, including the CBN, saying they acknowledge the fact that they created multiple um, exchange platforms or rates, now it feels like we have to bear the brunt of what's going on. Well, that's so much we can take this morning on a top trending. We take a break and when we return, it will be time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.